Welcome to Hear, Believe, and Receive. This is Pastor Danny again saying we are so glad to have you with us today. And Pastor Pickering is going to be uh, with us again today, and he's going to be delivering another good message today. But before that, Brother Ralph is going to uh, sing us another song. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take Him at His word Just to rest upon His promise just to know the saith the Lord. Now I'm so glad I've learned to trust Him. Precious Jesus, save your friend. And I know that you're with me. You will be with me till the end. Hallelujah. Yes, glory. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him. How I've proved you more and more. Yes. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. Thank you, Brother Ralph. Praise God. Trust, yes, trust Jesus. Yes. Trust Him. More and more. The more and more you do it, the more and more better it gets. <laughs> Praise God. Brother Pickering, can't wait to hear your message today. <laughs> Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Danny. Uh, this is Roger Pickering again, and I want to continue sharing what we started in the previous podcast. We were talking about the incredible love that God has for people. It's just mind-boggling when we think of the great and wonderful love that God has for you and me. We began last time talking about a poem that was written in 1859 by Anna Warner. Then three years later, a gospel songwriter named William Bradbury saw the poem and put music to it. And he also added a chorus. It didn't take long until the song went worldwide and became a favorite, especially of children. We're talking about the song called Jesus Loves Me. This I know, and it goes on, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. The chorus that was added is, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Why are we talking about what many call a children's song? because it's so simplistic in telling us and showing us the love that God has for people. Amen. God loves you. Amen. There are so many people in the world today who can't believe that the great God on high, the creator of everything, could love them. They just feel so unworthy. They feel like a worm crawling on dirt and that God doesn't want anything to do with them. But God loves each and every one so much that He sent His Son Jesus to earth to die for your sin and mine. The truth is, there are even many, so many Christians today, yes, even those who go to church every week, who believe they are so unworthy before God. They just feel they can't begin to measure up to what God wants of them, that they're just so unworthy. And then when they do miss it, Satan convinces them that their sin is just too great 
and God could never forgive them or love them again. And yet Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 in the Amplified Bible says, But God shows and clearly proves His own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One, died for us. When we can believe that, we put ourselves in a position where the Holy Spirit can help us begin to renew our minds to the Word of God. Amen. As we renew our minds to God's Word, we begin to see so many ways God loves us and so many blessings that He has made available to us. It's Satan who puts these negative and unworthy thoughts in our heads and tries to keep us from believing and accepting the love that God has for us. Can I just tell you something wonderful about our Heavenly Father and Jesus? Jesus loves us, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. In our previous podcast, we read Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39, which says, Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. Now believe that. Just believe that. In John 13 and verse 34, Jesus even tells us that He's giving us a new commandment. He says that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. In John 15 and verse 9, Jesus says, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. Well, it sounds like the Lord wants us to remember how much He loves us. And as we remember how much He loves us, we're to also remember that He wants us to begin to love others like Amen. He loves us. Amen. Then in verse 12, Jesus again says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Hallelujah. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells yes. me so. Amen. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. The voice translation says this, Consider the kind of extravagant love the Father has lavished on us. He calls us children of God. It's true, we are His beloved children. Then verse 16 says, Hereby perceive we the love of God. We perceive the love of God because He laid down His life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Amen. Love was expressed through Jesus willingly dying for you and me. That's the greatest and highest form of love a person could show. Here's a story I came across several times actually in my research for this podcast and this message. This is actually a message the Lord gave me a few years ago. And it's one that I couldn't file away and forget about. But here's the story that I saw. Air Force Colonel John Mansour, a Vietnam veteran, tells about an eight-year-old orphan who was wounded by a mortar and needed a blood transfusion. No American had her blood type, but several of the other orphans did. In pidgin Vietnamese language, which is part French, the doctor, with the help of a nurse who knew a little French, tried to explain to the frightened children that unless they could replace some of the girl's lost blood, she would die. He asked who would be willing to give blood. The children looked in wide-eyed silence. <laughs> After several moments, a hand was raised, wavered, then dropped, and then it went back up. Oh, thank you, the nurse said. What is your name? Hang. Hang's arm was quickly swabbed, 
and a needle was inserted, inserted in his vein. At first he lay still and intent, silent and intent. Then he began sobbing. He covered his face in shame with a fist in his mouth. His sobs turned to silent crying. A Vietnamese nurse arrived on the scene. Seeing Hen's distress, she spoke rapidly in Vietnamese. She listened and answered in a soothing voice. He stopped crying and looked questioningly at her. When she nodded, relief spread over his face. She then said to the Americans, he misunderstood. He thought he was dying. He thought you asked him to give all his blood so she could live. After thoughtful silence, the American nurse asked, why would he be willing to do that? The translator asked him, and he answered simply, she's my friend. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now that grabs your heart. Amen. Sounds like Jesus, doesn't it? Paul wrote in Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8, and I share this from the, the Living Bible. When we were utterly helpless with no way of escape, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners who had no use for Him. Even if we were good, we, we really wouldn't expect anyone to die for us, though of course that might be barely possible. But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. I know that Jesus loves me because the Bible tells me so. Paul, in his prayer, in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 18 and 19, he prays that we might really get hold of how much God loves us you and me. He says in the Living Bible, may you be able to feel and understand as all God's children should, how long, how wide, how deep, and how high His love really is. And to experience this love for yourselves, though it is so great that you will never see the end of it or fully know or understand it. And so at last you will be filled up with God Himself. Amen. Amen. Well, how high is it, this love of God? As high as heaven itself. How deep His love went to hell to conquer evil. How wide His arms wrap around the world. How long so long you can't outrun it. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 says about Jesus, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For Thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by Thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. That's every race every color, every sex, everyone. God loves you. Say it. God loves me. Even me. Yeah. I saw another story in my studies written by Phyllis Zeno. She was a freelance writer of Christian articles and she also wrote stories for the book Chicken Soup. This article is said to be a true story about an encounter that Phyllis Zeno had and then wrote about it. One day, a beautiful but very troubled little girl came through the door of my day nursery. From the very beginning, I became captivated by this child who had so little but needed so much. I was heartbroken that a four-year-old could suffer such heartache and pain. She was born in prison after her mom had used marijuana, crack, and cocaine her entire pregnancy. 
The little girl was nonverbal and had very little control. I knew her progress would be a mighty battle. Whenever somebody approached her, she became violent for long periods and ended up in a fetal position on the floor crying out. I found myself praying for her day in and day out. As months rolled on, I began to bond with this child that no one wanted. She and I worked very hard, taking one step forward and four steps back. Daily, we sat in the big rocking chair in my office, swaying back and forth and back and forth. During our rocking time, I sang, Jesus Loves Me. She always settled down and became very still at the melody. Though she never spoke, peace seemed to fill her face as she listened to the song. One day, after a very long battle, I held my special girl to again calm her fears and pain. In silence, we rocked back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. Then she looked at me with tear-filled eyes and spoke for the first time saying, sing to me about that man who loves me. Well, that grabs your heart also, doesn't it? Well, when you're feeling down and unloved and you feel like you've missed it with God and you just know He couldn't love you any longer for what you've done, just remember the song and know that it's true. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Amen. I want to again thank Pastor Danny O'Neill and Pastor Simone Foraker for giving me the wonderful privilege of sharing this podcast with you. Jesus really does love you. And if you're looking for a good church, then I hope you'll reach out and visit Global Outreach Church, also called Go Church. The church is located on Chafee Road and services start at 1030 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Now, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life or if you've pulled away from God and now realize you need to make things right with him, then I want you to call the church at the phone number on the website and someone will contact you and pray with you. But know right now that Jesus loves you. Make that decision to come into the family of God now, knowing Jesus loves you.